War has returned to Europe. The two global superpowers appear at the brink of violence. Global geopolitics are in a bad state. But when we set out to make a video about the future of Earth, we stumbled upon something very upsetting, something that will change the world, but more specifically, give us one of the greatest geopolitical challenges humankind has ever faced. On that path, we discovered even more quite unique and interesting the geopolitical challenges we will meet in the coming decades, which will dramatically change the world as we know it. What is this geopolitical challenge that we stumbled upon? Well, it started with researching CO2 emissions and the whole global warming thing. As we already know, the drastic temperature changes will have far-reaching repercussions. Most worryingly, and what seems to be one of our greatest upcoming geopolitical challenges, this climate catastrophe will cause the biggest refugee crisis in history. The reason for this is that the world's poorest nations are incapable of coping with the challenges of the climate, which makes sense. It's not just the planet getting hotter, it's also the increase in frequency of natural disasters. Nearly 1.2 billion people are therefore expected to be at risk of displacement by 2050, with 200 million migrating to a new nation. Now, unfortunately, the study doesn't differentiate between people with resources relocating voluntarily and refugees forced out of the nation by the consequences of climate change. The proportion between the two is difficult to predict, but 200 million is a gigantic number. To give some context, the height of the 2015 European migrant crisis saw 1.3 million people reach Europe in a single year, while the peak of the US-Mexico illegal border crossings was 1.7 million people in a single year. This is so much bigger than that and will have cascading consequences across the world. Many will tragically die on their journey. Host countries will see their resources drained by unwelcome arrivals and it will become a sticking point in politics. Wealthy migrants will also have a less obvious but no less important impact. You see, in the modern world, highly skilled individuals are an economy's most valuable resource. The quote, brain drain of losing your best and brightest to other countries has a serious impact. To show just how important skilled workers are, we only need to look at Russia's European neighbors. As orders for mobilization reached the Russian people, skilled workers fled the country and settled down abroad. This has brought economic booms to their host countries at the cost of Russia's own growth, with Armenia in particular shattering expectations. This just seems like a massive challenge we have to overcome. But it's time to discuss the next geopolitical challenge. Humans will be back on the moon with the United States' Artemis program, routinely going to the surface from a station in orbit called Gateway. SpaceX is also planning a mass landing. This means, in our lifetimes, we will have a permanent population of humans on other celestial bodies. Now, I know until now we've been rather cooperative about space, but realistically, this will change with permanent populations, bases, and so on in outer space. This brings a whole host of challenges. Will there be borders on the Moon and Mars? Will we have defense programs and therefore weapons in space? If we do have borders, how do we determine who gets what? Previously, only Russia and the US were competing in the space race. But this time around, China will also become a prominent player with its own goal of landing humans on the moon by 2030. It's a tough one to predict, so I'd love to hear what you guys think will happen here. But there are more pressing issues than space. Chinese and American animosity is reaching a boiling point over the island of Taiwan. For the first half of the 20th century, China was an unstable mess where two political parties rivaled each other to run the country. The Communist Party, known as the CCP, and the Nationalist Party, also known as the KMT. After World War II, a civil war broke out between the two, and the Communists finally won in 1949, forcing the Nationalists to escape to the island of Taiwan. The KMT appealed to the United States to defend Taiwan 
to prevent the spread of communism. Tensions have remained ever since, with China desperate to finish the job and conquer Taiwan. Every year, things seem to get more heated with Chinese threats, military drills, and close calls. By 2045, nothing will have changed. You see, China might want Taiwan really badly, but it's not a smart strategy. China has gotten rid of trade with the US and the rest of the Western world, and giving that up for an island that realistically has little to offer would be ridiculous. That's without mentioning the human cost of the war and the presence of nuclear weapons. Because of this, we expect China to simply wait for the US to lose interest in defending the island. Initially, the US-Taiwan alliance was ideological, but lately it has been more transactional. You see, the Taiwan Semiconduct and Manufacturing Company, or better known as TSMC, has become the world's leading factory of modern microchips, a story we've definitely all heard of before because these are extremely valuable and we had a shortage of them not too long ago. These things basically make modern technological and military devices possible, so protecting them is a no-brainer. However, the US also doesn't want their source of chips in danger of attack, so they've been attracting chip manufacturing stateside. As local production grows, the US becomes less dependent on the little island, so its willingness to fight over it might falter too. It really depends on the stance of future US presidents and Congress, which we obviously can't predict. Also, while attacking Taiwan isn't smart from a geopolitical perspective, it doesn't mean China will give up. You see, China has been fostering extreme nationalism in their school system, raising a generation of young people that see China as perfect and superior. In their eyes, the Taiwan issue is an embarrassment that cannot stand. So would the government buckle under the pressure to act? Well, only time will tell, but it's very unlikely due to how incredibly severe the fallout would be. The conflict dominating today's headlines, though, is the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Once more, only time will tell how it plays out exactly. However, we know that Russia won't come out of it as a global power. Its military proved to be outdated and poorly trained. Its energy leverage over Europe has vanished and its economy has been hit with record sanctions. Russia will probably end up as a second-rate power firmly in the grips of Chinese influence. They simply have no other option. They don't have the GDP to trade as equals with China and their alternatives are limited at best. In fact, some argue this has already happened with French President Emmanuel Macron calling Russia a Chinese vessel. Now, that's probably an exaggeration, but it goes to show Russia's fall in international standing, which they won't regain in the coming decades. They might be on the way up by then, but they simply do not have the economy to turn it around and compete with the global powers by then. Besides that, the rest of the world will feel pretty familiar. The US and China will likely be the top powers with no clear winner, both with incredible militaries and economic might, trying to outdo each other in a hostile but non-violent race. The European Union and India will probably become middle powers, with India growing to replace China as the world's factory. You see, wages are rising in China and tariffs make their exports less competitive, and that has already started an exodus. This will not stop. It will just increase as China becomes a land of innovation rather than the land that produces the innovations of others. More nations will rise because of this, with Vietnam, the Philippines, and Mexico becoming regional powers. For our American viewers, Made in Mexico is the label that you will be seeing a lot more of as they leverage their free trade agreement and vicinity with one of the world's superpowers. So while this will probably be what the coming decades will look like, at least geopolitically, there are some possibilities that everything could change, which is where it starts to get interesting and also a little absurd. The first is the collapse of the United States democracy, which might sound completely crazy, but it is a real risk. I mean, 
you don't need to look any further than the January 6th insurrection, where protesters attempted to do this very thing to prevent President-elect Joe Biden from taking office and maintaining Donald Trump for a second term against the will of the people. Yes, they failed, but the plot had unprecedented support, both from the public and within the government itself. Even after its failure, there have been repeated and deliberate attempts to both justify and downplay the event. Thomas Homer Dixon, Canadian political science professor and founding director of the Cascade Institute, writes that, quote, by 2025, American democracy could collapse, causing extreme domestic political instability, including widespread civil violence. By 2030, if not sooner, the country could be governed by a right-wing dictatorship. We must not dismiss these possibilities just because they seem ludicrous or too horrible to imagine. So yeah, we have a lot of real catastrophic possibilities lurking in our future. But that's it for this video. Let me know if there are some major upcoming geopolitical challenges that we didn't cover or that you thought of. I'd love to see them in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.